Hey, yeah, Cryptozens. Tonight's show, Voyager Rejects SBF, Can Robot Dogs Save Bitcoin, and Zip Mex Damage Investigated by the Thailand SEC. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time, and the date is July 25th, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. My name is Nicodemus, and I will be your host. The cover model, mascot, and co-host for this podcast is Tex. And together, we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. So take a minute, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast now, because we're here at 10 p.m. every night, so that when you leave in the morning, you're taking with you the crypto news analysis that you need to start your day. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. So last night, I brought news of Voyager, Sam Bankman fried and Alameda Research. Basically, FTX and Alameda, both SBF creations, they offered to buy out Voyager, buy their digital assets, well, most of them. Anyway, they offered to buy Voyager Digital's digital assets and loans. Then they would have made money available to Voyager's customers. They would have gotten a cash disbursement in an FTX account. And then at that point, they would have been free to do whatever. Then, if you get any money at all, the amount of money that they give you early would be an advance, and that would be taken out of whatever money comes out of the bankruptcy proceedings, money that you would be getting back from your claims. They also said that even if you don't take the offer SBF is making, then you're fine. You're not going to miss out on anything other than the chance to get some of your money back earlier than you would have, which could be a real advantage right now. Voyager Digital rejected FTX and Alameda's offer to buy out their digital assets. They did so on the grounds that the offer isn't, quote, value maximizing and that it potentially harms their customers. They filed a rejection letter in court on Sunday. Voyager's lawyers were not impressed with the offer, but they also took issue with the very public way that the offer was made. They said making the offer public could jeopardize other deals that they were damaging a, quote, coordinated, confidential, competitive bidding process. They said Alameda, quote, violated many obligations to the debtors and the bankruptcy court. And Voyager said that their plan is better, that it would be prompt and it would return all of the cash and most of the crypto as much as they can. They said that the Alameda offer was, quote, laden with misleading or outright false claims. Their lawyers said this deal is just a way to get Voyager's assets for cheap and that it's not a bailout, but a liquidation of assets, quote, on a basis that advantages Alameda FTX. And they raised some valid points, you know, like capital gains taxes, like the elimination of the VGX token. They said that that would, quote, destroy in excess of $100 million in value immediately. Now, SBF responded. In a late night Twitter thread, he told his 750,000 followers that Voyager's customers have, quote, been through enough already. And he's with me. The resolution of this bankruptcy could be years in the making, which is why the SBF deal protects customers. It doesn't exploit them. Here's what I mean. The market is ice cold lately. We had a brief suckers rally, but the macro hasn't changed lately, and the market has definitely cooled off which means this could be a big advantage for Voyager customers now rather than later because it would be preserving the customer's value. People could get their money now and invest it. If what many technical analysts and bystanders agree is true, this market could snap out any time now. People could be investing their money right away at its present value. Otherwise, look at Gox. Mount Gox was hacked back in 2014, and they still don't have their money yet. That's how slow the courts are. Now, think about the effects of inflation over this period of time, especially right now when inflation is bad and getting worse. So giving people access to their money now so they can use it now and benefit from it now, and most importantly, reinvest it now rather than later, rather than four or five or 10 years from now when your asset is so devalued it's not worth anything anymore. That's if you get anything out of them at all. You know, 3AC was their biggest debtor. 
Most, if not all of that capital has already been claimed or has been liquidated. So I don't know that they're going to get much back anyway. So to my mind, it seemed like a good deal that Voyager was offering. Clearly, opinions vary. You know, frankly, I think this deal would have been a bit of hope for Voyager's customers. I know I'm one, and I think the lawyers for Voyager are going to drag this on and milk this for all it's worth, and then some. Sadly, we lost the trillion mark. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is at $994 billion. It's down 4.52%. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin, down 4.46%, Ethereum, down 7.7%, Tether, USDC, and Binance Coin, down 4.64%. Can robot dogs save Bitcoin? Now, when I ask that question, I mean robot dogs, not an algorithm, not a program, not an app, not an allegory, not a dog themed meme coin. No, I mean literal robot dogs. And I don't mean all Bitcoin, just a bunch of them trapped behind some lost private keys. There's a guy in the UK that sure hopes so. James Howells is his name, and he made headlines after throwing away a hard drive. Now, we know we're not supposed to throw hard drives away. They're supposed to be recycled responsibly. Take care of your e-waste. But that's not why he made headlines. Because we know that now, but back then, when Howells threw his hard drive away, it wasn't on people's radar. Now, this hard drive has the private keys to a veritable hoard of Bitcoin. By the way, I get annoyed when people say things like, there's 8,000 Bitcoin on that hard drive. There is not. There's some keys. Losing the hard drive doesn't mean those Bitcoin went away. They're not lost. You, can, you just can't access them. Anyway, he lost access to around 8,000 Bitcoin. That's roughly $176 million. And I suspect he's getting desperate. Because he threw that hard drive away, and it landed in his local landfill in Newport, Wales. So he's got together a plan. $11 million plan to recover this hard drive. And as promised in the title, robot dogs are involved. Two of them. Because his plan includes buying two robot spot dogs from Boston Dynamics. Which is a great advertisement for Boston Dynamics and their dogs. Those dogs hit the market in June of 2020. They've got a price tag of $75,000 per unit. And they've been used in construction projects, herding sheep, patrolling parks in Singapore, enforcing social distancing. So Howell's plan calls for using those robo-dogs as both security and scavenger, two of them, so that one can patrol while the other is charging. Honestly, I just, I don't give him good odds. You know, he's been trying to get access to this landfill since 2013, and it's not looking good this time. You know, a council spokesperson said, quote, nothing that Mr. Howells presents to us could convince them to change their mind. They said, his proposals pose significant ecological risk, which we cannot accept and indeed are prevented from considering by the terms of our permit. The global NFT market cap is down 30.84%. Sales volume is also down 2.87% in 24 hours. According to CoinMarketCap, the top five NFT collections by a sales volume are Bored Apes, followed by CryptoPunks, OtherDeed, Moonbirds, and Clonex. Now keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. Zipmex bills itself as, quote, Asia's leading digital asset exchange. They were apparently gearing up for a $40 million Series B funding. And that may be true, but that didn't prevent them from having to freeze transfers and withdrawals last week. Well, Thailand's Securities and Exchange Commission is concerned. They're concerned that some BitMEX users may have lost funds during the shutdown last week. So to that end, the regulator announced today that they are collaborating with law enforcement, that they want to collect data from ZipMEX's customers about potential losses experienced. Basically, how were they affected? How did the decision to freeze accounts impact them? They urged investors to submit their information. They've set up an online forum on their website. They said, quote, 
In order to provide more convenience to those affected, the SEC has prepared a form to fill out information facts to assess the impact to lead to the complaint process, including may be forwarded to the relevant agencies. Now, remember, it was just last week that Zipmex paused withdrawals. At the time, they cited volatile market conditions and said that they were having financial issues with their business partner. That, of course, set off the rumor mill. People were asking if Zipmex had Celsius or 3AC exposure. And then Zipmex started up again. That's right. Less than 24 hours later, Zipmex's customers were able to access their accounts. Even so, the Thai SEC is investigating. One of the things that they did was send Zipmex a letter. And in this letter, they want to know a few things. Top of the list, of course, is why did you pause withdrawals? Also, they want to know the value of the assets from their customers in their custody. And they want to know if they have exposure to Babel Finance and Celsius. And as it turns out, they have exposure to both. They're holding loans for both Babel Finance and Celsius to the tune of $53 million. That's right, $48 million owed by Babel and Celsius owing them five. Which, $5 million is a lot of money to me, but apparently not so for Zipmex, because they're just going to write that $5 million off as a bad debt. Then again, they don't really have a lot of choice considering where Celsius is at these days. In the meantime, they said that they're in talks with Babel. But it's always good to have a little insurance, and it looks like Zipmex follows that philosophy. In a recent tweet, they revealed that they were in talks, that they had multiple discussions with interested parties. And these parties might be their white knight. One of them even offered a MOU, Memorandum of Understanding. They said, quote, important announcement. Our conversations with various interested parties have progressed significantly. One of those parties has offered terms in an MOU, which includes confidentiality obligations, so as to be able to commence due diligence. Now, they're looking for about 50 million bucks to keep their balance sheet balanced. One of the reasons the SEC of Thailand is going after them is Zipmex doesn't hold a full license. They have an exempted payment service provider permit. Now, the current regime in Thailand wants everyone holding a full license. So maybe that's why they're going after Zipmex so hard. If Zipmex knows, they're not saying. The only thing we've gotten out of them was a brief statement by a spokesperson. We have been engaged with the SEC and other government agencies to provide them with all required documents. And that's all they've got to say. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. You stay safe out there. Watch out for yourselves, but watch out for each other, too. We'll see you tomorrow night.